and thank you everybody for attending. So well, I will talk about the, this future X-ray mission called XTP that is very related to the topic of matter under extreme conditions. Well, one moment. Okay, so first, let me start with a bit of history. I always like to make reference to the, the so-called Cosmic Vision uh, program of ESA for the Space Science for Europe in the decade from 2015 to 2025. So we are still in this decade. And one of the topics that was considered as crucial to be studied uh, with a, a space from a mission from space so that the best way to advance in this topic was to have a space mission, was the study of the fundamental physics laws of the universe, and in particular, the matter under extreme conditions. Uh, well, so the, what is, uh, the goal is to probe gravity theory in the very strong field environment of black holes and other compact objects like neutron stars, and the state of matter at supranuclear energies in neutron stars. So studying compact objects, sorry, uh, black holes, neutron stars, uh, we can reach this goal. So th these compact objects are excellent labs for fundamental physics. Why? Because we find there the strongest densities, gravitational fields and magnetic fields that exist in, in the universe and the conditions uh, we have there are not reachable in terrestrial labs. So how can we reach this goal? Well, through array observations of compact objects, compact stars, so neutron stars or holes, with high time resolution. And this will provide a, a unique tool to investigate this tool. Uh, well, this uh, strong field gravity and, and in particular, such as a few things that one can get are the black hole masses and spins. And regarding the dense matter, uh, one can uh, get uh, an idea, a very clear idea, better than with other methods of the question of state of the trident matter in neutron stars. So this is the main say, the presentation of the uh, scientific uh, background. So uh, the previous in the previous decades, there have been already some uh, satellites. Of course, we should go to space to observe in its rays. We will see why rays are in relevant for this, as I mentioned just now. So let's just uh, recall that there have been uh, this. This is a sample of previous satellites. And here I have indicated the uh, what is called the effective area. So it's a physical area, but taking into account the effectivity, so the quantum efficiency, say, of the detectors. So it has been of this order in previous mission. The most important mission regarding the X-ray timing, we could say in some way it has been a Rossi X-ray timing explorer, okay, which had less than uh, 10,000 square centimeters. Well, uh, regarding more recent epochs, we have the new, the first new uh, Indian astronomy mission, that is an X-ray uh, satellite, which has an instrument that it has a gas detector that has this effective area. As you can see, it's already larger than this RXT that as well, I was mentioning as the a very successful uh, already past satellite, not working anymore. And now we have a small instrument, but already uh, getting important results for the matter, for the study of matter under extreme conditions of density in this case. So the question of studying neutron stars, which is nicer that as compared to XMM and Newton, well, one of the, its instruments, we can see that it's already much better, even being much smaller in size and more, say, simple. Okay. So this is just recently. So if we want to study these topics, we should do a step forward in X-ray timing. So the timing studies have been limited, are limited by insufficient effective area and spectral resolution. So we should advance in this uh, direction. And for this, it is crucial to have detectors with low mass per unit surface. Because if we want to increase the effectivity of detection, we should have uh, uh, good detectors 
regarding their efficiency, but also, of course, they should be big in surface, have a high collecting area. So the problem is that if you increase the surface, you increase also the weight, and you know that going to space requires to have the, not being too heavy. So uh, just to compare that the, with new technologies, one can just in, uh, already increase, so decrease the, uh, the weight per unit area by a factor of 10. So the idea that was uh, already 10 years ago, uh, more or less, well, uh, started to be studied was to use the so-called large area silicon drift detectors that had been already used, have been already used in the large area, large hadron collider in the CERN in the Alice experiment. So these type of detectors uh, avoid pile-up. Pile-up means that when you are detecting a photon, uh, you get another one, so you are confused because you are, have not yet uh, recorded the signal of one photon and you receive another one and then the, the, what you get is the signal as if you had detected two uh, photons. So it's completely wrong. You get a wrong energy and it doesn't work. So when you have very powerful sources, and this is the case of the sources that one has to study, these accreting black holes on neutron stars are very uh, powerful, say, then you have you are have this problem. And also this is related. Uh, one an important problem is also, of course, that you if you want to get a good timing and you are receiving a lot of photons and they uh, you don't have detectors that can do good timing, you cannot do the study. So it's related. These are different problems, but related. Okay, avoiding pile up and optimizing time performance. Well, so then we studied, we proposed it uh, for uh, an ESA call for medium missions, the M3 call, uh, a new concept that was the LOFT, called LOFT, Large Observatory for X-ray Timing, that was merging, say, excellent timing, a good spectroscopy with a very large area. So the idea was here to uh, have the, say, the timing of this mission, when one of the instruments of this mission, the PCA, well, it doesn't matter the detail, uh, increase, say, by a factor of, say, it was, <laughs> the, uh, by a factor of 15, and at the same time, having a, a spectroscopy that was quite good, okay? Because with XMM, you have a large, uh, well, okay, so this is just uh, improving in these uh, two aspects, timing and spectroscopy. Of course, the spectroscopy is not the crucial point here, but combining both is what is critical. So having good timing and at the same time, not very bad spectroscopy, but good spectroscopy. You can get more ex excellent spectroscopy with new other types of detectors, but then uh, you cannot combine with the timing. So it's a, a trade-off of both with avoiding the pile-up, and this was the idea of LOFT. Okay, so then, since it's very related to what I will just in a moment uh, explain about XTP. I start with LOFT. So we uh, were accepted for feasibility study and what we proposed was to do this instrument with two. Uh, this is a scheme of with the spacecraft, already the platform that was uh, studied and proposed by the industries. So uh, that there was an instrument called the Larcha detector, okay? which was in this panel, so the solar panels, these, these panels are the instrument, okay? And a wide field monitor, which is this one here, and that I show here at the bottom in more detail. So the orbit was a equatorial, low equatorial orbit, which is similar to the one of the International Space Station, so it's this height and this inclination, and we have so launch. And it's important to have this orbit because it's convenient for the radiation that is received by the detectors and makes them work in better conditions than other orbits. It has some problems because you have the occultation of the Earth. Is the um, period is just one hour and a half, 90 minutes, but you have the advantage of uh, being protected by radiation. Okay, uh, so the effective area, as you can see, of that of loft of the large area detector was really spectacular as compared with all previous mission, previous and future missions, okay? So 10 square meters at 6 kV as compared to others even with Athena. So in this, uh, at, at the same time, having a very good timing. Uh, so the idea here is that one wants to observe, so 
uh, sources that are in outbursts, okay, which is when we can study the effects of gravity, so instance of strong field gravity, if you have an accreting black hole, or just if we some bursts in a neutron star, also accreting or, or not, sometimes we can just study this in, in, in detail. So what I mean is that it's a source that enters in a phase of outburst. So we need to know when this happens. For this, we should have some monitoring of the sky. And this is what was done in LOFT and will be done with XCP with the wide field monitor. It's, uh, uh, it's not a, it doesn't want specifically to look at all the sky, but to cover a large part of the sky continuously to just detect the sources that are known to be transients but that are now in a steady state, say, also not in a in outburst. So to detect the outburst and then point the whole satellite with all these panels here to that source. So the LID uh, uh, is not doing any kind of imaging, okay? But it has a very large area and a very good timing capability. And the wide field monitor does imaging just to not confuse the sources and detect them. Also does a, a lot of other things, but just to, it triggers the observations of the sources when they enter in an outburst. So this is the idea of combining these two instruments. Without the wide field monitor, you don't have any possibility to work because you don't know. It's a kind of blind instrument, the LID, okay? But once it points one particular source, well, of course, it has to avoid having some confusion and to uh, also look at the background and uh, other things, but it just is looking at one source. This is a bit the idea. Okay, so what are the, the topics that one can address? So, uh, dense matters, so proof the state of matter at supranuclear density in those stars, a strong gravity, we will mention a bit more in detail what this means later, but as is the strong field environment around black holes also. Uh, okay, and just also, I have a problem here with the cursor, also observe what we can call observatory science, of course, looking, in this case, the wide field monitor, looking at all this uh, big part of the sky, you always have a lot of sources there, you can distinguish them, here you have imaging in this case, and you can do a lot of continuous monitoring, which is important, not only to trigger the observations with the uh, LID, but also to do your own science. But, okay. So let's now move. So what happened with 60P? Unfortunately, it was not selected. So it didn't went to phase B. It was the plateau mission that was selected in the M3 call of ESA. And then we started, well, we continued. There was already from the scientific point of view, well, it was started uh, to have a con uh, collaboration with China, the IHEP, so the Institute of High Energy Physics of Beijing. Uh, that is an institute of the CAS, so the Chinese Academy of Sciences, that is in charge of science, of fundamental science, but also space science and satellites. So, and then this was, a, they had a project called XTP, X-ray timing and polarimetry mission, and then we, together with our, uh, say, instruments inherited from LOFT, we have this XTP enhanced X-ray timing and polarimetry mission. So what are the instruments? Just here is a summary of the energy ranges covered by the two plus two, so four instruments. I say two plus two because these two are the ones I just mentioned, the, so from the uh, Loft Heritage, so the, the European instruments, they are led by Italy and Spain, so by Marco Ferrace in Italy and myself here, we are the PIs, but it's a very huge collaboration in, in Europe, uh, with also ESA participating <coughs> and advising us. But it's not a mission of ESA, it's a mission of China, okay, with European instruments. But in addition to these two instruments covering these energy ranges from 2 kV to 30 kV, kilo electron volt is now is the unit of energy used for in, in X rays. Uh, okay, so we have also these two other instruments that have uh, grazing in optics, so they have mirrors in X rays, the mirrors are uh, not as the mirrors in. in, in for the uh, optical energy range. So the uh, incidence of the photons is just say parallel, almost parallel to the mirrors. So they are cylindrical mirrors here. I cannot show it now here, I don't know. 
uh, but we don't have time to explain these details, but this is known and this has worked already in space since several years ago, several decades, okay? So there are mirrors here and in the focal plane, in this case here, the bottom of the satellite, they have the, the instruments. So one is a normal, say, uh, X-ray uh, uh, instrument, okay? And the other one is more uh, specific, and in fact, there are not have not been any before. Just uh, there will be one doing polarimetry, just a type of detector that allows to do that. So, well, this is known since some years ago, but there have not been real satellites with this capability. There will be one, uh, the US, in collaboration with Europe as well, but uh, from NASA. Uh, well, XP, it's called, but it's less, uh, has less effective area than the future PFA, Polarimeter Focusing Array of um, XTP. So we have this set of instruments. Well, here's the web page where it's information and the launch is expected in 2027. Mission is not completely approved because China has a different way to proceed, but uh, it's already in, in phase B. So ready to be adopted after the preliminary design review, so-called preliminary design review that in principle should be at the, in the summer of next year, 2022. Okay, well, there is a lot of information here. It's just, it should go fast, just to mention here the different, just here you can see for each instrument what is its main, say, feature and main uh, property. So the spec, Spectroscopy focusing array here, okay, SFA, has a soft response because the large array detector, not, okay, you can see here the energy range. Soft means uh, lower energy it rays. He can catch uh, photons with lower energies, down to 0.5 kilo electron volts, whereas the large array detector starts as the, and the field monitor and the PFA start at two kilo electron volts. This is one main difference between the different, these instruments, okay? The, this one has soft response that is very important because of course the sources not start in emitting at two kV, but they go to lower energy. So having the complete, as complete as possible spectrum is always very important. Uh, here we have uh, the, this polarimetric capability, uh, which is the main feature of this main interest of this instrument. Well, now in optics, here means that they are non, nine, you see here, there are nine plus four, so 15, uh, uh, 13, sorry, uh, uh, mirrors here with the corresponding detectors on the focal plane. For the large area detector, there are 40 modules. We call modules this, uh, sets of, I think it was 16 uh, detectors. And we have, in addition, the wide field monitor, which is the instrument we are leading. Okay, so wide field monitor, as I mentioned, so the LID has the large area, which is important, as I mentioned in the first or second slide, to have a huge collecting area, but always having, which is thanks to the detectors, a very good uh, spectral resolution, better than 10, Sorry, microseconds, okay? It's not the same here. The resolution is not as good. And the spectral resolution is more or less similar in all the instruments. Of course, it's not the, the spectral, well, okay, I will now compare with Athena. It's not the spectral resolution that one can get nowadays, but we don't need it. We need the combination of good spectral resolution with, uh, at the same time, excellent timing. And regarding the wide field monitor, it does monitoring as its name is indicated. So it just will, it does its own science, of course, but also uh, it has this crucial role of uh, telling the whole satellite to move, to point to the particular source that enters in an outburst. That will be then observed with these three and the wide field monitor as well, of course, instruments together. They are, uh, is say narrow field instruments pointing to all together to the same direction. Well, so here we have the effective area compares. When I move the, the mouse, <laughs> the pages move. Okay, so the, here we have the LID, you see, it's not as, uh, it's, uh, it has not as much area as in the case of the loft. It's three square meters instead of 10, so it's less. But anyway, it's even 
uh, it's much larger than any other previous instrument working in this energy range. Uh, well, so we have a comparison here, and Athena, for instance, which will be able the wide field imager, doesn't pretend to, to do what uh, XTP pretends. We do other things, but not uh, the timing that can be done, spectral timing and polarimetry that can be done with XTP. Okay, so just here, a comparison is a bit technical, but just to see that it's a, a, a very intelligent, I would say, combination of instruments, okay, that makes this XTP doing a particular science, not all the science, but doing it as others cannot do. So, okay. Uh, so the PFA, but as I said, is five times better than the, this XP satellite that we will launch in principle next, next year, I think, in the US. Well, and also here, I will show it later, but just now I can already mention that, that uh, the field of view, the simultaneous field of view, so the what part of the sky is the Wi-Fi monitor looking at at any moment, okay? It changes with time, of course, but because the satellite is moving uh, uh, along its orbit and also the pointing, of course, goes where one it's decided. But it has an instantaneous, simultaneous field of view that is much larger than the others from similar instruments. So SwiftBat, which is already very good here, okay, it's working nowadays to detect gamma ray bursts and many other things, many transients. Maxi, okay, and the space station, the RXD, the All Sky Monitor, the one I mentioned at the beginning, that made a very interesting science. Uh, sorry. Well, okay, so this is very important. So it has an unprecedented combination of large field of view and imaging capability down to two kilo electron volts. So it does not do the imaging at the level that it can be done with instruments with mirrors, because as we will see, it doesn't have a mirror. We already saw it, even and I have not explained it yet. It works with coded mass, but it can uh, distinguish enough to just not have confusing confusion, except perhaps at the very crowded, as we said in astrophysics, very crowded zones of the galactic center. But several of the sources that will enter in eruption, some of them known, some of them not known yet, uh, new sources that can appear in principle, except if they were exactly at the crowded zones of the galactic center, will be well placed also because we will see bright sources uh, with, so we will see faint as well, but sources, but for this timing, we will see bright sources. So no problem of confusion. Okay, so we could just make a short summary of the comparison. So to put XTP in context, that XTP will focus on the tilted study of bright phenomena. So the brightest black holes and neutron stars with excellent, excellent timing, sorry and polarimeter capability, whereas Athena will be more focused on fainted sources and with excellent spectral resolution. So they have different names, they are not competing. <laughs> so with this PFA, so this polarimeter focusing array, this, we have added a new topic uh, in XTP, science topic, with respect to the ones we had already in love. So we have this possibility to study uh, strong magnetics, which manifests say, through polarimetry. Well, so we can repeat here, constrain the question of state of ultra dense matter and neutron stars, test of general relativity in black holes and neutron stars, uh, light and matter in ultra strong magnetic fields is very complicated. There are people here that have worked in the Institute, in, in fact, in all these topics working in detail. So of course, this will be a very important how to have this facility. Uh, okay, and then the observatory science that is monitoring transient sources, including, in fact, electromagnetic counterparts or gravitational waves for rapid follow up. This is, of course, also very important nowadays. That... Well, so I will just pass very fast, I'm not the expert on that, but just mentioning a few of the aspects of science, not all of them, but just here we had a, a very nice talk about Laura. Dolores, some a few weeks ago, so she was participating also Alessandro Patrona, that also works in the, our institute, in this work, uh, at the Epoch of Loft, and also now with XTP. So the study of one of these, say, core science topics, 
the study of dense matter, uh, in particular, so the study of the question of state of neutron stars. So just as she showed, we have this diagram of temperature uh, density, say, or, and then neutron stars that can be studied by XTP are in this region here. Okay, so we know that the neutron stars cause the densest and most neutron rich matter in the universe. Uh, and these extreme conditions of low temperature and extreme uh, and very high density can only be explored in neutron stars, not in labs in on ground. Uh, and well, so this uh, relationship is encoded, say, in the equation of state. And then what can be done, and is already in fact being done with nicer, but will be done much better and with more sources and with less uh, uncertainty, say, uh, the genesis uh, with uh, XTP is to study the determine the mass and radius to, with very high precision for a range of masses. Okay, then the equation of state and the mass radius uh, are re, uh, relation are, are related. So if you can well determine the mass and the radius, you can constrain and uh, see which, is, which one of these different theories is the good one. Okay, sorry, yes. So this is just, uh, an example uh, that, uh, of the pulse profile model that I will show now, but not we'll not talk about that. But you can ask people working in that in the institute. Well, so depending on if you have more weak or strong gravity, well, the pulse pulse means that these neutron stars are rotating. They are mainly at the, well uh, high frequencies. If you have periods of milliseconds, they are rotating more than so, well one thousand times per Second, so really you need very good timing <laughs> resolution to uh, well determine how the bright brightness varies with time and to detect, uh, so to do the Fourier analysis to see if there are some oscillations and a lot of complications that exist. But here just in uh, imagining that you have here a thermonuclear uh, burning, so an X-ray burst here, and then you, you just take into account the fast rotation, you see that you will have this variation. There are many more complications that introduce variations with time, but just in this case, then what they do, well, I don't understand all the details here, but I think it's quite clear, but I mean, I cannot explain everything and not extra, but the idea is that you study everything, also you take into account what the, the effects of of general relativity and also the light, then with whatever, so the propagation also of the light, also, also the photons that we are receiving. Uh, so all is taken into account in your models and the observations, for instance, here, no, you can see this a, a kind of 3D diagram, no, you can see the phase so related to the rotation of the star, no, the neutron star, and then you have here the, en the energy and the counts are in the, this color code. So, well, then this is, for instance, this nicer instrument. And then knowing the response of the instrument, having your model, having the observations, you finally get the mass radius, okay? And as we saw, and Laura has told us, though from that you can then study the, deduce, say, the equation of state, say, the pressure density relation in the matter. Supra nuclear densities, as we saw in this zone that is not accessible in the lab. In the, well, this was just to compare here, uh, since this was made also with the nicer people and that participating here, we also participate and we show at the end of the presentation in Strobex uh, uh, proposal for NASA, where there will be also a larger detector and a, a wide field monitor and an instrument that is called XRCA, that is uh, an instrument that is the one that exists now in this nicer mission that is in the International Space Station. Station. So you see that really the is spectacular the changes that you can have with these future missions. Okay, the improvements in effective area. Just that that allow you to do this with high precision. So here this is a simulation for XTP for taking into account the lot and also that sorry that with the uh, PFA you can get. Uh, for the sources that you observe with PFA, this polarimetry focusing array, you can get information of the geometry and then you can introduce, you can break the genesis. So, because if not, you sometimes perhaps you can have two sets of, uh, of 
parameters of your model that give the same result and you don't know but if you have an extra observation that gives you say geometry or whatever so this is the good thing of XTP that you have uh, different ways to study the same okay and then you can combine and finally you get here for instance this very small you would get with an observation of a particular source this is a simulation okay 100 kiloseconds which is not uh, a lot uh, you can get this very good constraint okay so this is just a list to show that uh, taken away from uh, Anna Watts uh, papers so, uh, and this one is for uh, more related to XTP with simulations for XTP, that you have different types of sources, neutron stars in this case, that are in August. So, uh, then different ways to uh, do the pulse profile modeling. Uh, and so you can, through the speed measurement, this uh, detect also masses and radius. Well, you can also have some information about the state and other things. So this, what just put this list without explaining everything, anything, that there are multiple multiple complementary diagnostics. Okay? It's not just that you have one way to get your result, but you can compare with different results. So you have different types of sources and different, so you can really, uh, in principle, the, constrain very well the question of state in the future. Well, so of course, this is just to repeat that it has impact on fundamental physics, okay? knowing the state of nuclear matter and high densities is fundamental physics. And also, of course, it's very important for astrophysics because one can understand the properties of neutron stars, which is related to the production of supernovae, so core collapse supernovae, work of formation, and also, of course, all the mergers of neutron stars that, as we know, are sources of gravitational waves and sources of uh, GRB, sorry, of the well, gamma ray burst, okay? So it has a large impact. So strong field gravity just mentioned in a, uh, to, just to uh, distinguish what uh, XTP is, aims to do and what is done in the gravitational wave detectors, uh, it has nothing to do, say, the sense that with the uh, uh, LIGO, Virgo, ELISA, ELIRA, whatever, all the missions that are aiming to detect gravitational waves, you are studying the dynamic space times, and here you are studying stationary space times. Well, and also just to mention that here you know, with LOFT, here this was from, taken from LOFT, but ECP is the same. You can study bo both uh, the strong space time curvatures around a black hole. Uh, or, or weak space time curvature. Okay, well, black holes, neutron stars, or whatever. So you have different black holes, stellar mass black holes, or neutron stars will be strong space time curvature. Okay, and supermassive black holes will be weak space time curvatures. You can access with observations of timing uh, processes related to the accretion of matter onto to these uh, neutron stars black holes. You can access to these different types of, of curvatures, so different field. Uh, different uh, states of gravity, say. Well, 16 orders of magnitude in space times curvature, in principle. Well, this was. Okay, and here, observatory science, there are a lot of, of topics that one can study because you are continuously monitoring a huge part of the sky, as I mentioned, with the same detectors as I mentioned briefly for the uh, LAT and wide field monitor instruments. So, both are very good for the timing, so you can do very good studies of a lot of sources, okay? So this is just mentioned, it's the only part I participate in science here, it was just to compare no? what RxTE with its PCA, PCA which was a gas uh, proportional counter array, uh, so it had uh, uh, gas detectors that were quite good, but you see that the spectral resolution here is not perfect. But just I want to mention here, uh, this was a, a nova, okay, uh, an ex this is a white dart with uh, an explosion of hydrogen on its surface. And then you can see that it really decayed, okay, this is the spectrum, the energy versus, the flux versus energy in time. So in 20 days it was, it became undetectable. So you should be fast to catch this uh, uh, eruption. Mm. And uh, uh, okay, and half enough. Well, so it varies very fast. So with the wide field monitor, this is, has been uh, simulated for 
XTP, you can catch this eruption, of course. And with the LID and SFA combined, this is just to show you that it's very good to have this uh, soft coverage, okay, low energies with LID, you start at, uh, well, this is, this is a problem, this should be at two, okay, not at 25, I just see now this. Uh, okay, so then you start starting here, starting here changes a lot. Well, anyway, just to see the, the compare, no, the signal to noise you should have here, you would get, if this observation, this happened uh, in 2006, okay, if this instrument with instruments would have been available, we would have seen this instead of that, okay? And this was the best that could be done at the epoch because no other instruments are able to, were able to react with such, uh, fast, let's say. Okay, so let's now move, well, to the explanation more of what we do in XTP, so the biofilm monitor. So just to mention, this is also for those of that don't know that we can uh, do imaging in two different ways for the rays. In gamma rays, we can only do, we cannot use already mirrors, but with X rays, we can still use mirrors. So if you use X-ray mirrors, we have a focal spot here. Okay, so the, the photons are concentrated here, but another way to do Imaging is to use coded mass, which is a, a layer here, which has some uh, pattern where there are opaque zones and transparent zones. Then you get here a illumination here of the detector, that should, the detector plane, which should be, of course, pix say pixelated in some way. And then you should you see here a pattern. Knowing the pattern of your mass, you can uh, know from where the uh, photons came and do imaging, okay? compare the pattern, you see the pattern, you see if you have one source here, another there, and uh, the, the convolution, okay? So the advantage is that you can get a much larger field of view with the coded mask system than with the focusing system. For the gamma rays, you don't have any option. You cannot have a mirror, but with the rays you can choose, but uh, in this case, for the wave field monitor, as the name indicates, what we wanted we want is to have a large field of view, then the coded mask is the best, the preferred option, okay? Well, so now I will just go fast, no, because of very late, to show what we are working on. So each camera contains uh, this silicon, the detector, just show that, but without entering into the details, just that here the idea in this type of detector, just to avoid, say, this pile up and getting uh, very good timing resolution is that the photons say do not interfere between them. It's just a very rough way, uh, not very academic to explain, it, but just well. So in a normal CCD, when you are detecting one photon, perhaps another will arrive, and then you can have problems. Of course, there are other types of active fields as well. There are all types of sensors today or nowadays that can avoid this problem. But here you don't have this problem because you just uh, have the photon wherever it, this is two halves of the detector. So then you will reach, it will, uh, there will be a, 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 a charge here generated that increases successively. Okay, okay, there is a drift here. And then you have a charge cloud here that can be detected in one, two, three anodes here, okay? Then depending on the, you know, where you have detected it, sorry. So then you, you have the position determined here in this direction, okay, very well determined. And depending on the size of, the, of this cloud, you can determine the energy of the incoming photon. So it works in a different way as other detectors that just you will detect it here or here, and then uh, without this drifting. Well, just a very fast way to explain it. So this, what happens is that you have a very fine resolution in one direction and coarse resolution in the other one. Then with the coded mass, if you can see here, uh, we have a fine resolution. So the very narrow slits in one direction and, and, not so, uh, and not so precise in the other direction. Okay, so here is an idea of the microns and millimeters in the two directions. Then the idea is just, to have these detectors on the on here, the detector plane, here the coded mass. This we have a mock in the Tepe Galvez uh, lab uh, office and under, and you can 
sheet. It was in the library some time ago, so it's a very small, the camera is quite, quite small, but efficient. So then with one camera, you will get the, what we call 1.5D image, okay? And only a small, uh, a rough idea in the other direction with the other camera, if you put them uh, perpendicular to each other, say, but they are identical, other uh, part of that, you, you get in the position in the other direction and then combining them, you can have a 2D position. So uh, very good position. Okay, so this is the idea. And then just, this would be, this is theoretical because it's not the, what will be in reality in XTP, but this will be the idea to put them. So each one of them has this wide field of view, this what we call full illuminated in the sense that all the sources that are in this opening here of 30 degrees, okay, can be seen. And this uh, zero response is when you just consider that they can go from another part, okay, here you have a, a larger field of view, okay? But with not full response, you are not using all the detector plane then. Okay, so then combining this with this uh, uh, orientation, we can cover what we saw in the first slide, so in the cover of the presentation, we can cover all the, the area that is uh, where the LAT can then uh, observe in more detail. LID and the other instruments, the SFA, PFA, okay? So, but of course, the, this uh, narrow field of view instruments cannot uh, cover uh, so uh, such a large area. Well, in XTP, the spacecraft is different than it was for the plan of loft. So this is the current uh, configuration, okay? So here, we, these will be the models of the LID here. This is not fixed, it can be, there are other options. In fact, in the web page, you have another picture of the spacecraft. And these are the, the mirrors, say, and the, of the other instruments and the wide field monitor instead of being just here in the middle, and uh, so it was showing here, it just distributed in principle, but the field of view is the same. So this is the field of view we get. And now going a bit to the details, but I've been just so fast. Uh, here, of course, should give credit to the work done by the engineering team working in STP here in the Institute, uh, Jose Luis Galvez, Fabio Crescenti, and Ander Ormaeche. Uh, what we are, well, this is a scheme of the instrument, the coded mass, what we call the collimator that protects the zone between the coded mass that receives the photons and the uh, detectors where they are detected, okay? And on the back, there, are, there is the back end electronics. So all the detectors and front end electronics are here and back end electronics is here, okay? We are in charge of not only the design of the coded mask and all the mechanical structure, but also since we are TIs of the instrument, we are responsible of the thermal control of the whole cameras and also of the computer that is in another location of the satellite. Uh, and it's what is related to the harness with the, the cameras and uh, also of the same integration and verification of the camera. What, what I, we have marked here is what we are designing, okay, but we are also in charge of the global uh, control of everything. Well, this is just a, a table with the main properties. So just to specify the scientific goals of the wide field monitor, even that in fact, I have already mentioned the idea of XTP, so it's already explained, but just here, it should provide triggers for target of opportunity observations of the narrow field instruments, the LAD, the SFA and PFA. Uh, and these are the list of different sources, okay? And of course, to do that, as I said before, the field of view should be as wide as possible, okay? And also, this could be uh, mentioned, it's mentioned, is called a secondary scientific goals because the, it's not for the core science. The core science will be done, as I mentioned, I insist on that, in this very bright, uh, uh, transient sources, black holes, neutron stars, okay, that uh, the Wi-Fi monitor will detect when they enter in August and then the LID, PFA and SFA will observe. And the Wi-Fi monitor as well, but the Wi-Fi monitor at the same time is observing a very huge part of the sky. So, so we have the guarantee that it will uh, uh, 
alert, but also it will do the very important work of monitoring the long-term behavior of the trade sources. So we will have uh, important databases about that, the text or both, well, okay. Also, interesting, there is a system also to give, uh, provide alerts via a system that we call XBOT, uh, to, to ground, in fact, with a system of VHF and antennas that this is, has been studied by, is here, by the SOAM satellite that will be launched in one or two years from now. It's already finished now, which is a collaboration between CAS, the same uh, I have, and CNES, so France, okay? And there is this uh, network, but this was planned several years ago and it's already in place and we can use it. We are working with the same <laughs> Chinese group and also in fact, CNES participates in, well, uh, France in some way participates in the, way in the XTP. But also, we, since we are working with China, there is also the Beidou, which is the, uh, sorry, where is it? Uh, yes, here, Beidou is the GPS, the Chinese GPS that, of course, is also very interesting for this purpose and could perhaps will be used in this sense to give these alerts, okay? So we can uh, provide, well, a lot of, of alerts, uh, one per orbit or so, and, uh, and this can be do uh, downloaded to Earth every orbit or every two orbits at, at most, so every hour and a half or almost three hours with one arc minute location accuracy, okay? So this is important. Well, this is just a paper, the most recent we have of the global description of the wide field monitor, and this is PIE. And this is just to make the, uh, so may let you know, the ones that don't know it yet, that there is, all the important papers about the XTP were published in uh, this uh, Springer uh, journal of uh, where China, colleagues publish their papers and also us in this case. And so there are here the descriptions of all the four topics, say the observatory science, uh, dense matter and strong field gravity and polarimetry, say well, strong magnetism, okay? And also a description of the whole mission. I have just put here the names of the Spanish because I, I had presented that in the CEA, no? the Spanish Astronomical Society, just mentioning the people not only from here, from the Institute, but from Spain. Perhaps I have forgotten some people from the group of Magnesian or people that are here, were in the papers and were not at the Institute you know, or in Spain, say, then when we, I put these names here. Of course, here in the Institute, there are a lot of people working, especially, say, a group of Diego and Nanda. No? Uh, in, in topics related to, uh, well, of course, Laura, uh, related to the science of XTP, the core science. Well, this is the consortium, so the people participating, so Italy, Spain, Germany, France, Switzerland, well, you see here, a lot of them, not only the UK that was participating in love, but they don't participate here, it's missing, well, only others, but the main. Okay, and just here to finish, I would like to mention Strobex, that is, well, uh, I have not because I, this is spectroscopic time resolving observatory for broadband energy X rays. You know that the people <laughs> find uh, acronyms for everything, no? or find the way to justify an acronym. Okay. But this is just this is very interesting. This will be, this is a white paper submitted to the Astro 2020 Decadal Survey where we are participating here. I am the co eye of the wide field monitor, and this idea would be to use uh, here a, a super, say, nicer, which has this, uh, the same very fast SDD detectors, even faster than the ones we can have because they are not large areas, they're single pixel. They are faster. Uh, and with this optics, so they have a lot here. It's 30 well, something in, in, in nicer, here it's 80 or I don't remember the name, number now. So it's single optics. Each one of these small, say, mirror has its detector, okay? But this detector is ultra fast. So you don't do exactly imaging here, but you have, you are detecting a lot of, of photons at the same time with the best precision you can have in time, okay? Say. This will be the larger detector and this is the wide field monitor, okay? And so then this is exactly, we have exported, say, to, to China and to US. Uh, by the way, they don't talk to each other, but we talk with all of them. 
uh, the idea of this larger detector and, and wave field monitor well. So then perhaps I think that it offers a unique combination of instruments, broader energy coverage, high spectral resolution with outstanding timing resolution, polarimetric capability with a huge collecting area. Then it is optimized to study matter under the most extreme conditions of density, gravity, and magnetism. The science area addresses are fundamental physics topics, as we said, and of course, as, as say, purely astrophysics topics related mainly to compact stars or neutron stars and black holes, especially when matter accretes is accreted onto them, but also when they have instability, say, or outbursts uh, alone. It could be, for instance, a magnetar, no? it doesn't need to have accretion. Okay, time domain astrophysics, of course, we are surveying the dynamic ray sky with large duty cycle, as I showed, especially with the wide field monitor. And, and then, of course, also multi wavelength, multi messenger astrophysics, because it can also detect uh, gravitational wave events. Okay, sorry that I think it was a bit late. <laughs> thank okay, you for thank, thank you very much, Margarita. So now, if there are some questions, please feel free to unmute yourself. So, for example, go ahead, Emilio. Hi. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your presentation, uh, Margarita. Um, yeah, uh, I am worried about the, the software which uh, is going to be used in, in this kind of uh, instrument and also, uh, is is uh, the ICE or the well the CSIC or EEC uh, participating on on this kind of design of the software? That, well, yes. Yes. Well, here I put the, the I indicated the engineers that are working now, but Luis, now that he yeah. needs a lot, of course was helping us in recent years no, with the software. In fact, we have not been involved in software because we cannot do everything. We are already very busy with no much support. We don't have a project manager. We don't have product assurance quality assurance manager. Mm -hmm. So on the software, is because the the institute, no, yeah, can if it, well, is very powerful in this uh, topic. We asked for some help, and Luis, in fact, was helping us. So now we don't have any help, and we, of course, need help. Why we need help? Because even if we are not responsible, I have not shown the di diagrams here of the responsibilities, but uh, I indicated no, that we are not responsible of the um, we are responsible of the mechanical structure of the whole instrument. But of course, we should follow what is going on in the software of the related to the. ICU, instrument control unit. There are, in fact, two softwares there. The software, the normal software to make it work, as in any computer. But there is an extra software that will be provided by the French guys that are working for this SWARM satellite that is for, uh, specific for this uh, fast, say, transmission to ground of the alerts of gamma ray balls and other transients, not the normal alerts that. Uh, will be just automatically, say, given inside the spacecraft, no? But also this will be handled, of course. Uh, when the Wi-Fi monitor has a seasonal alert, it should uh, tell to point the satellite to a uh, given position. But in addition to that, as I said, every in every orbit, in fact, we think that we can detect a, a transient that can be, in case it's detected, transmitted to Earth. So uh, these are sources that won't be observed that won't uh, lead to the pointing, repointing of the satellite, but that the information is transmitted to Earth. Well, I mean that there are two types of software, and one is in charge of France, but the main software, in fact, now is in, made, will be made by Turkey, that is not in Europe, but they are interested. Uh, so it's, but we have not asked to do that. There was an opportunity because the Finland that was there, they already stepped down on the project already at the end of loft. So, but um, we cannot do everything. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I know. But uh, for instance, if uh, there is something that uh, has to be done and, and maybe we can um, get more involved uh, in yeah, yeah. this kind of task, uh, well, uh, I think it's a good opportunity, as, as you said, uh, to, to, to participate on, on this. Uh, yeah. In this project. Welcome, we should organize that because it's a question of also administration. No, if yeah. it's unfortunate, they are not 
permanent positions in the institute and also in general, no? I mean, in Spain, in research with, you know, for um, people working in technology specifically for engineers. So we always rely to the money we get from the from the Ministry of Science no? to, yeah. to have these contracts, then the, the money is limited and we should concentrate it on the contracts dedicated to what we are more responsible for. But of course, with this idea in the Institute, no, IEC and ICE to sharing the resources and helping is what was made with, with Luis. No? Yeah. But we have not yet anybody helping and we need it. Eh? They ask our colleagues, where, where, do you have already some dedicated to software to help? Not, not yet. But uh, which uh, will be the task of uh, this person? Uh, maybe I... I, I we... supervising, supervising what is being done. Is what we okay. which the requirements because uh, we are of course we have the requirements already fixed we are in phase B but these requirements the flow down to requirement every time there is a change so um, supervising the requirements uh, making sure that what they are doing the the teams that are doing that make sense so that they fulfill all the requirements of the instrument of course they, mm -hmm. they are aware of that and they are professionals no the, but the, as PIs of the instrument, we should be in charge of that. If we were not PIs, well, uh, who, well, we interested as well, but of course this is important. So it's something that we should solve as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's move to Jose Miguel, who has a question. Uh, hi, Margarita, very nice talk. Uh, you say that this is a very uh, interesting uh, project for, uh, for the time resolution. So what about uh, flares, uh, X-ray flares in younger stars? Do you think this, this satellite will be useful uh, for yes, that? I think, uh, yes, uh, let me check one moment, sorry. Uh, yes, yes, perhaps not as, um, I think here, are you seeing this? This is the list, yeah. so there was something about that I should, Check, but flares, yes, flare stars here. You see my slide, no? Yes. In this observatory science paper, there is an explanation of every topic. So yes, yes, it can also do. So, yes. Yeah, because these kind of young stars, uh, it, they are already well known to have uh, short uh, time flares. Mm -hmm. They can be detected both in the X-ray and maybe in the radio. And there is no clear correlation when there is an X-ray flare, there is a radio flare or not. So it's something the physics behind are not well known. Yes, yeah, so we can check I can give this paper that are public, of course, what, the, what can be done. Hmm. Okay, thank you. What the satellite won't do, well, I'm always very, instead of saying the positive, I have said all the positives, you know. But what the satellite won't do is just to uh, go to a, a say transient phenomena phenomenon that is not the ones in the core science if there is one at the moment that is core science you you see what i mean no but what uh, so all these topics that are not in the core science because in principle it will be busy it should be busy all the time with this core science Mo not all the time but most of the time say then uh moving to see some but flare stars that they, they are I don't remember now, they, they are not of short duration, no, this is, the problem would be if something is, okay, well, uh, we should check for sure, it, um, it's in the list here and this has been studied in detail, so yes. Okay, thank you. And one last question, Nanda? Yes, uh, thanks Margarita, very nice talk indeed. Uh, my question is a bit, it's on another mission that I didn't see you mentioned, but, uh, or maybe you did and I missed, I'm sorry, which is the new M5 that is used proposal. Are you oh, yes, yes. Um, somehow connected with it? And how does it fit in comparison with XDP or? No, you are right. Well, since they are still not approved, I have not approved. In fact, yes, yes. Well, Mm, now you catch me. I should remember, in fact, I'm in the science team, but I don't remember not exactly the... But the Zeus is more uh, for uh, gamma ray burst and other yeah. tangents. So right. for sure, in, in certain aspects, for gamma ray burst, since it's treated for that, apart of other topics, for sure it will be better, say, for gamma ray burst but, than XDP. 
but on the contrary, I would say it's not so aimed to study the, as you know, no, this. Uh, so to have these uh, sources that are so bright that they can produce pile up in almost all the <laughs> instruments if they are not designed right. to do that with combination of large areas. So what can be done with a, so a list of sources already known, of course, the new that can appear by loft for these two main topics, well, or three topics, I'm almost sure that uh, the sales cannot do, do it. Oh. But on the other hand, a lot of transient no, <laughs> phenomena that the sales will observe, in particular gamma ray but other, so other sources, of course, that uh, this, perhaps the cells is more, perhaps for the spectral resolution, for instance, of the coverage and uh, soft coverage, perhaps it can be better. So they don't compete. In fact, uh, as with Athena, of course, Athena will do starting at things go very far away with an excellent spectral resolution. So they do different things. It's a very specific, not specific, but at the same time covering a wide range of sources, but not all the uh, but specifically that, no? when you have a lot of flocks and you want um, with a lot of variability and you need to have this combination. Yeah. Okay. And also the polarimetry, I didn't put attention on polarimetry, for me it's always a complicated, <laughs> but of course the geometry, no? you, you can study the geometry that helps you a lot. Of course you can study magnetic fields. No? Yes. There was a nice, and these are probably, no? nice, we had a meeting re-meeting on XTP in January, one year ago, in fact, here, and there were very nice talks about that, when about the specifically the capabilities of, of uh, having this, uh, the, capability, the importance of having this capability of polarimetry, you know, by Silvia Zane, that you know, you work with her also, no? So really a lot of things that can be studied only with this combination of, of instruments. So it's, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very good. much. Thanks a lot. No, not yet. If it's a group, we we'll decide soon. I think, no, one of these months. Sorry. The sales, the sales. It's not yet approved, no, but it. Not yet. Not no. very soon, no. Yeah, in a few months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The, then, thank you, Margarita, again. Thank you to you. <laughs> and we should finish here. It's already five past one. So thank you all for attending. Mm -hmm. And see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.